everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I am continuing some decluttering and reorganization in my sewing room. And the very first episode I did this, I emptied out an old um, plastic, three drawer plastic bin. My dog's barking outside. I just gave them both baths and I won't let them in the house <laughs> until they're dry and my back hurts. So I figured this was a good time. Bending over for 20 minutes over a dog. Ugh, two dogs. Anyway, didn't come here to hear that. So I cleaned out a three drawer bin. Some of it went to donation, not much. Most of it was reincorporated back into my stash or I found it a home and there was a lot of trash in that. Now I moved into this sewing room just two years ago. So I did go through everything pretty much when I moved from my old sewing space into this new sewing studio. I wouldn't really call this a big declutter as maybe a, just a little organizational reset. Now, what I'm going to do works for me. And one of the things I recommend that you do is if, if this is all new to you, I follow three very powerful decluttering minimal type ladies. And I'm not a minimalist by any way, shape or form. You can tell, you know why? I don't like my house to echo. <laughs> if you don't have anything in your house on the counters or on the floors, it sounds like you're in an empty house. Anyway, neither here nor there, right? One of the ladies that I follow is Cass from Clutterbug. She used to have a show on HGTV called Hot Mess House. And she talks about four different types of organizational style. And before you ever get into any kind of decluttering or organization, I would recommend that you go to her. She's got a little test you can take and I'll link to it below the video. And you can go there and figure out what's your organizational style. So you need to know your organizational style. You're either a visual organizer in that you want to see everything or you forget that you have it. You are a not a visual organizer. You like everything closed away in a cabinet or maybe in a tote or in a drawer or something like that. And then you are either a big category organizer. You just like big bins of stuff or you're a micro organizer and you like little bins of stuff. And I have been doing this for several years and I am the B. So in Cass's categories, and you might even be two, you might be predominantly one and then have a secondary trait of another. I am a B. I am a visual organizer. I like everything out where I can see it. I'll show you what I do with my scraps. I have a giant U line. So quilters like visual organization, but I'll show you across the room here. See that? That's a U-line bin stack thing. It's stock full, fat quarters on the top plus yardage on, on top of that. I am organizing that right now. And then down below there are what I call big viable scraps. I like my fabric out. Most quilt stores are organized like a B. A B is a visual organizer and the B likes to have everything in little categories. And so quilt stores, stores in general are organized like bees. Visual, everything's out where you can see it. Nothing's closed away unless you're at the little hardware store with the little tiny drawers, right? Everything is micro organized. So in quilt stores, things are organized by color or by designer, fabric line, whatever, that kind of thing. That's the way I like to organize my entire life like that. I am a visual person and I need to see it because if I don't see it, I forget that I have it. Uh, my husband is a butterfly. He likes visual organization. He has to see everything and he likes big categories. In my sewing room, while most of it is very visual where I can see everything, I like all my machines out. And so back here, that's my cover stitch machine. There's my new Brother Airflow 3000 serger or overlocker as you, you, you folks overseas call it. This is sewing machine row. So here is my Brother Luminaire. And then I've got my ironing station right there. And then back over here, there is 
my NQ3700D, and then on the other side of that, in the far corner, is my brother PQ1500 piecing machine. So I like all my machines out. I don't like them in cases where I have to open it up. You know, the most I wanna do is pull that little plastic dust cover off. That's kind of it. But for the most part, I leave everything out and uncovered and open i want to see it and then i have to dust a lot but i'm okay with that <laughs> because i stay on top of that there's times when we just can't do that you can't have everything out all the time because we're not a store like michael's or hobby lobby or anything like that and over here right where i'm pointing i have a set of desk drawers there's, you know, my Luminaire accessories and some extra threads I reach for quite a bit. And here's a Madeira thread cabinet. But down here, this is a set of Alex drawers that I got at Ikea. And I've labeled them machine feet, pre-wound bobbins, USB sticks, and glasses. I used to keep my glasses in there. Buttons, manuals, tracing, chalk, and Velcro from my garment sewing days. I haven't looked at this. I haven't looked at this in a long time other than opening a drawer to grab what I need and then put it back or not uh, use it up, whatever. So I haven't really gone through these yet. These were organized when I filled them, when I bought them, which was probably three or four years ago. I know what's in there or I know what I need and I know where to look for it. But I haven't gone through these drawers in several years and so I don't think there's gonna be a lot of trash in there. I did go through my manuals drawer about a month and a half ago or so, and that's what got me on the idea of, I really need to go through my space and decide what I need to do with all of the stuff and kind of just clear it up because there's just way too many things and you all know this, if you let it go too long, it's gonna just, it gets totally unmanageable and out of control. And we can close the drawer and say, I'll handle it later. And I've been doing that for several years. So now today I'm gonna to go through these. I was at the grocery store and I picked up some bins. I got a couple of these and these fit in the lower, taller drawer in the Alex drawer set. And then I picked up a couple of these. Now these are designed to be like cosmetic trays, you know, see the little bitty squares, but they're really perfect, I think, for what I need in this particular set. Now, I, I don't recommend running out and buying these things if these won't work for you, okay? You need to figure out your organizational style first, and then you've got to build up what are called your decluttering muscles. <laughs> Dawn from Minimal Mom talks about decluttering muscles. So I will be using a lot of concepts from Dana K. White from A Slob Comes Clean. I will link to all of these YouTubers below. They have made me a convert and my room and my peace of mind are better for it. They really, really are. And when it comes to decluttering, I, I'll put something here somewhere in the video that I saw this morning that made a lot of sense. But when it comes to decluttering, you either have to live with regret that you got rid of it and you didn't mean to, or maybe you shouldn't have, or you have to be overwhelmed with stuff. And so you have to make that choice, okay? I have chosen regret. I would rather regret that I got rid of a piece of fabric or whatever it is. The only thing I really regret getting rid of that I wish I hadn't, I used to have one of those giant um, steam press irons. I got rid of it. Shouldn't have done that. That was a mistake. Worse yet, I gave it away to a coworker's wife. Ugh, if I could get that back. Anyway, but they're $200 if you can find them. I'm not gonna buy another one. I don't know why I'd want it, my ironing station is fine. See, that's how I think. So anyway, so what I'm going to do here is mostly just reorganize. I don't think I'm going to come across a lot of trash. I guarantee you I will come across things that I forgot were there. And when you forget that you have something, the odds of you going out and buying it again are pretty high. 
So that's why being a visual organizer, if you're a quilter, is a good thing. Because if you don't do an inventory every so often, you're gonna spend money you don't need to. And we don't wanna do that because I'd rather buy pretty fabric, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's just go through this drawer by drawer, see what's in here and figure it out. I will uh, put make a pile for donations. I will make a pile for rehoming. And according to Dana K. White, that you should take it there now. Well, I'm not gonna do that because I have the discipline to see a pile that needs to go somewhere else and rehome it right away from the pile. If I get up and take it there now all the time, I will, I'll never get anything done because my brain will go squirrel and I'll take off, okay? So I'm just gonna start going through the drawers. Let's get to it. All right, this says machine feet. Let's see what's in here. Lots of goodies. All right, so I have this little case. This has lots of machine feet in it. Uh, this is a Rubbermaid, but these are great. You can get these. These are great, like they have them a lot in the fishing section at Walmart or something. So I have lots of machine feet in here. When I was doing a lot of garment sewing, I was in this thing all the time, but it's great. Okay, oh, here's the glasses. I put a ribbon on them so I wouldn't lose them. Could always find them. And now I've got walking foot, walking foot, walking foot. Okay. I've got a thread net. I've got a couple of different bobbin cases. And I did, don't know what dot these are, so I don't know if they are, I'm assuming they're sewing bobbin cases because I don't see a purple dot in the bottom of these. So these are not embroidery bobbin cases. All right, I've got, I've got a packet of what used to be accessories for a brother machine. I don't, I don't think I need that. I have another packet of accessories. This is for the NQ3700D. I wrote it on there with a Sharpie. So I'm gonna just keep this intact, and that's fine. This is the uh, buttonhole foot. Here's another thread net. I've got lots of parts and pieces in here. These go to a cert, oh, this is for the Brother 1034D overlock. I have another one down at the coast, so I'm going to keep this. I like to write the name of the machine that stuff goes to so I can be sure to, uh, to know where it goes, what it goes with if I ever get rid of it. I have some Dentec floss threaders. These are good if you get snags in your embroidery machine. Okay, I have a single needle, single hole needle plate. I don't know what machine this goes to. I'll have to look. And then I have a seam, magnetic seam gauge. Why, why is that in there? I don't know. I'll put it, see, and so here we go. All right, here's another bobbin case. No color, it's probably for sewing. Here's an extra spool, uh, a pin for an extra thing of thread if you're gonna do two at once. Here are some needles. Uh, uh, HG 4BR 14, that's a 14 gauge sewing needle. I've got a little pin for applique I never use. I have a set of sequins and ribbon feet. Again, for sewing, not embroidery. Here, I bought one of those 35 piece feet things. Okay, I don't know what that is to, and it's empty, so it's trash. All right, and then I have Janome Clearview Cover Stitch foot. This, I think, goes on my cover stitch. Oh, you know what it is? This is the original foot that came on my cover stitch machine, and I put the clear view one on the machine, and this is the original one. So I'm going to keep this because I still have this machine. This is an elastic gathering attachment, two of them, for Janome, for a Janome serger. I think I still have that serger, but uh, it's sitting in a closet somewhere because I hate it. So I'm gonna hold on to this. And then here's another Janome foot, blind stitch foot for Janome overlock machine. Okay, so these three things go to a machine I don't have anymore. I probably need to put it on offer up or something like that. Um, get rid of it, I need to get rid of it. I have a piece of foam, I don't know what it goes to, and I have a piece of drawer liner. 
Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, that's not, that one's not too bad. I have this old bamboo tray, and so these, the spool pins and thread nets and stuff, so these are feet, okay, and this is, I'm going to put the, um, the accessory kit somewhere else, and this is a buttonhole foot, so I'm going to put this in here. Okay, if you can hear a generator going in the back, my husband is welding something, so that's what that's about. All right, so I am going to put things back in here if they go here based on how often I use them so that those things that I use the most get the prime real estate up in the front. If I'm going to do any kind of sewing at all, I will use these feet first. This is where I reach and look first for all of my zipper feet or anything that I'm going to be doing, buttonholer or whatever. So I'm going to take these overlocker extra feet and put them back here. I'm going to take my uh, walking feet and I'm going to put them in here. And I will go ahead and keep this to know me foot back in here as well. I'm going to put, let's see. Let me see what I'm going to do here. So I want to put this one in the front that's the one I use the most I'm gonna remove these needles that's not where they go and this one in here and I wonder if I can I don't know if I can get I don't know if I can use this in here I don't think it'll fit or it might yeah it will it's just a matter of organizing it right okay then this will fit right here with my walking feet my needles go somewhere else and I have the sequins and ribbon feet, and that can sit in there. I rarely use those, if at all. Okay, so that's pretty good. I've got an applique pin. I have a thread net. I'm going to put all those extra machine accessories somewhere else, but I'm pretty happy with this drawer right now. So good. All right, that wasn't too bad. The next one, it says pre-wound bobbins, USB sticks, and glasses. So I used to use a lot of USB sticks before I started doing wireless stuff. So let's go through here. I have a bird's nest kit. It is here because I have another one. This is from Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I love it. I have another one that's in my cabinet for my 10 needle. And then I have one for here, but I'm not entirely sure this is the best place. I have pre-wound bobbins, thumbtacks. I do use thumbtacks in embroidery. I don't know. So right now this is starting to look like a embroidery accessories. I've got some needles. These are, let's see. These are the EBBR. So these are embroidery needles, these loose packages. Here's a couple of boxes of them. The 7511 EBBR, that's all I use in my embroidery machine. And if I'm gonna sew, I usually will sew with these too, just cause I'm too lazy to change the needle unless I'm doing denim or something. All right, I have some pre-wound bobbins and a needle threader. I have a small little sewing gauge. This is bobbin thread. I have empty bobbins. And then I have all kinds of spool caps. I've got some band-aids, a couple of sew tight magnums if I want to use them on my embroidery machine. Uh, those could actually go somewhere else. I forgot that those were in there. Here's another partial pre-wound. I'm gonna put that there. Band-aids don't necessarily go here. In here, this is a thing to lift off the magnetic hoop magnets from Brother Machines. I've got two of them in here and they weren't even in the same place. So thread nets, spool caps, dental floss. Dental floss you need. Here's another set of needles. I don't know what they go to. And here is a uh, USB extension, uh, USB-B extension, okay? Doesn't belong here. And let's see, I have another sewing needle in here. I got lots of sewing needles all over the place, you guys. I don't even know what they are. Okay, I know there are more spool caps in here somewhere. All right, we have 
Magic Little Genie Magic Bobbin Washers. These are great if you don't have a specific bobbin case for your embroidery machine. These little silicone washers allow your bobbin case to spin really fast in embroidery. So they're very handy. I'll link to these below. I've had them for years and years. There's some old dental floss to clean out thread out of my machine. Oh, here's a pair of Hemos. That is for freestanding lace. Okay. And then two, uh, these are all hemostats for freestanding lace. So I, while they're for embroidery, I, these are from OESD. These are nice. I would not, look at those. Oh, they're not hemos. They're those little alligator clippers. Look at those. That's cool. I would not have, I forgot I had these. I would not have looked for these here. These have another home. I need to find another home for these and this isn't it because I forgot they were here. And then I have a patch and the patch doesn't go here. So I've got to find homes for those things. What is back here? What is this? 144 pre-round bobbins for brother embroidery machine. Look at that. I forgot I had those. There's a box. And here's a whole full box of these things. Oh my word. You know what? So I used to buy these a lot and then Dime came out with their pre-wounds and I've been using these. They're pretty much the same thing and I don't use these in my multi-needle. I use the magnetic in my multi-needle, the magnetic pre-wounds in my multi-needle because there's not a bobbin case spring in the multi-needle like there is in these, in the, uh, the single needle. So I guess I'll just use these up and then jump back to using these and I don't have to buy more. See, I just saved myself. These are expensive, you guys. They're, they're really expensive. So I guess I just save, now I know they're here. Oh, okay. So this is a really good spot for one of these trays. It's not USB sticks, so I can take that label off and it's not glasses, so I can take that label off. So I think I can relabel this drawer to be pre-wound bobbins, embroidery machine accessories, needles. I think that's what I'll do. Yeah. That is a better description of what's going to be in here. And that makes everything real happy right there, just like that. So where's those other little flossers? Those can go in here, so my floss is in here. Y'all, I use this all the time. I'm in there constantly. This is buttons. Okay, that's a different thing. And I had some other stuff, yeah, down here. I knew I did. Those are other things, okay. I knew I had another thing down here. This is the chalk. This is for garment sewing. And that, that goes in here, tracing chalk. But I have these other, these are machine accessories, okay? And this is garment chalk, or what was garment chalk. That's the lid to it. I don't know what happened to the chalk itself. Hmm. Okay. So these go to my, my thread tree that is right, right back here. These go to this. I usually only use, it'll hold 20, I only use 10. So here's the other 10 spool pins. So I'm gonna put all these things together. I'm gonna take the thread net out and put these in here. I want all these little things together that look the same. Okay, so let's find these things at home. Thread nets will fit right there. I probably don't need most of what's in here. So I'm just gonna put this in the back because I don't want to get rid of it in case I sell the machine, which I never will, but you never know. All right, needles can go in here. So my pre-wounds, oh my goodness. See, I've got, mm-hmm. There. 
that's great. Now I have an extra little tray. I like to keep little almost empties. I use those all the time. So, y'all, I don't use these things. I have, I might use one on my long arm and that's kind of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these, I just have a couple of them in the bottom of this accessory. I know, I'll know they're there. I'll just put these right here, that works. And I have another almost used right there. And then I have some black bobbins. I have, let's see, a thread, a needle threader. I can just put all these in here. That's great. Okay, so that's trash. I don't need that. All right. I actually should put this. Okay, here's where you get to where would I look for it first. That is something from Dana K. White. So if I was to be looking for bobbin thread to make my own bobbins, where would I look for it first? It wouldn't be in here. It'd be over on a thread tree of some sort, and I'm pretty sure it would be the one in my storage room. So my bat cave, I call it. So I'm going to put this in the other room. So I'm going to put this in a pile to be rehomed. My little bobbin cases, I guess I can just drop them in here. Oh. Okay. And then I'll put my bird's nest thing there. This doesn't go here. It goes in another spot. And my bobbin washers don't go here. Put this little bag in the trash. My needles go in another spot. These needles, I don't use these needles. I have another drawer in the other set of Alex drawers just for needle. I have another big, big spot for needles. And I'll put this one 14, size 14, with it. I still have room for all of these pre-wounds, so. All right. See, isn't that nice to be able to just pick all of that up at once and get to whatever I need? Hold that. Great. Okay. All right. These little tools right here, um, these are actually, I don't know, they go to embroidery hoops. Do I consider them? I don't consider them a foot. I don't know. I'm trying to think, where would I look for them first? I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put them here for now because if I'm working on an embroidery project and I need to use them to get the magnets off the hoop, and by this, I'll show you, it's this one. Here it is right here. Here's that hoop, okay? And these things are designed, because if you try to lift this off, you really can't. You need that pry bar, and it'll lift it off like that. So it works really, really well to save your hands. This is a brother magnetic hoop. So I'll just leave them there for now. Okay, the thumbtacks, I only have them not for office supplies, but I have them to be able to do multi-hoopings with like Kimberbell projects that I've done. But this is not where I would look for them first. And the bandages I'm gonna rehome into my first aid area in my bathroom because if I cut myself, I wouldn't come over to my embroidery accessory drawer. Why are these here? I don't know. Okay, rehome. All right, boy, that turned out really nice, didn't it? That looks really good. I'm, I'm proud, and I still have a couple of other spots. It's very nice. The piece of chalk that goes in here is gone. I really don't use this anymore. I'm gonna throw this away. Okay, my buttons. Now this is a hot mess. Now, when I was doing garment sewing, I reached in here constantly, and I still reach in here when I need a button. So I have a lot of garment buttons. A lot of them for military uniforms old military uniforms. Okay, and then I have this bag of garment buttons. I don't know why I have these. I don't know why. Here are more pieces to a thread tree. See, there's the picture. Okay, this has been here, oh, I don't know, 10 years. Do I wanna get rid of it? No, I'm not. But I'm gonna take all these garment buttons I'm gonna figure something out. Here's a Walmart 
five dollar for a gazillion buttons. Y'all, these are handy. I, I will, I will not get rid of them. And you, you guys know why. I'm not gonna go into it. You know why I won't get rid of them. Okay, I've got a Ziploc I don't need. Oh look, mermaids. These were buried. I forgot I got those. I have an two more little white ones. I have flamingos. I've got flip flops. Some chickens. You know, you gotta have buttons for Lori Holt projects. Definitely. Um, I have some flowers. Just lots and lots of buttons. Here are some pearls that I would sew on, like for a veil. I, that This is where I would look for those first in that button thing. Stitch buttons from Lori Holt. More flip flops. More fish. Let's see, that's trash. That's trash. What is this? This is a gathering foot for what? Genomi gathering foot for sergers. There's another serger foot for that Genomi machine. I'm gonna put it with the other ones. These are big cheap buttons that I won't get rid of because I can't. Um, they don't know where the trash can is. Garment. More buttons. All right. A nail file. Uh, this needs to be rehomed. I would not look for it first in my button drawer. Why is it there? I don't know. Okay, throw that away. Now this is a stylus, and I do look for my stylus in here. Okay, my my various styluses that I have, I look for them in here. So that's the brother stylus, not the Mixu. I need to leave that out. This is the new brother stylus that takes the place of this great big giant honking big one right here. But it doesn't, it's too skinny to fit in the holder. It almost needs, I almost need another little something to hold it so I can find it. But I do have all of my stylus, styluses? Is that a word, styluses? <laughs> Style eye? <laughs> I do have them all in one place. Um, no. A nice, the nice bamboo box would be nice. Okay. The stylus for this box is in the cabinet where my 10 needle or Spanky is. I'm not getting rid of it because it's got additional feet that go with it. So I'm keeping the box. This came in something. It's from Grace Company, so it I think it came with my long arm. And then this is the brother one. Okay, these need a home. I would look for these in a drawer in my other set. I'm gonna set this over here. So now I've got this drawer right here, and this is where I'm gonna put all of the buttons that are not garment buttons. Oh, and here's another thing in here. This goes to something. I don't even know what machine this goes to. And there's a cleaning brush with a point turner, a set of there's some needles in here, a little wrench, a knife. I bet you this goes with that Janome machine. What do you think? I'm gonna put it with those other feet. So I'm gonna put my Lori Holt buttons and any Lori Holt, any Lori Holt rickrack as well. This is where all of those things will live because I'm just gonna put this in here too. I've got a couple of things of her Rick Rack that I will use on quilts. I'm not going to go through these, you guys. Go through them as I need them. I'm not going to do that today. My garment sewing days with buttons is pretty close to over, but you never know when you need a button, right? That's one of those things we just can't get rid of. That's why our grandmothers had buttons and buttons and buttons. I need to tape that shut. I have some, thought I had some embroidery tape. See, now I could use a roll of embroidery tape over here. That that needs to be here. Here's a roll of Kimberbell embroidery tape. Because I use embroidery tape all the time over here. That'll keep that in there. So, I could use another little container here. I'm gonna have to find one. 
The manuals drawer, I went through not to, oh, look at that. I have more of those. How about that? Yeah, I thought I had gone through these. And then in here, this is a magnifier for the Luminaire. This is a sidewinder, button winder machine, and um, bobbin winder. And then this is the brother mouse. So this is manuals and of machines that I have. I, I just, oh, here's some more feet. What is all this to? I think this is to a brother serger. Yeah, these are extra things I had that go to a, other brother machines, I think. This is one of Keith's old plastic bags from making his seam ripper, so I don't know what it is. I don't know what this goes to, guys. I have no idea. Size 11 needles, organ needles, and a needle threader. Eh, I don't know. Gauges, seam gauges. I don't I don't have a clue. Oh, you know what? These might be to the PQ1500. Yeah, my PC machine because these are yeah. Yep, there's a hopping foot for it so you can free motion quilt. See that? Yep, that's exactly what this is. Okay. And then these are not for low shank machines. This is for a high shank machine. And the only high shank machine I have is the Brother PQ1500. I'm gonna get a Sharpie and write on here what it's for. Okay, so I know that these are here now. These actually should go back in here with the rest of the machine feet. So I've got that in there where that goes. And then these are big accessories down here to the Luminaire. Okay. All right, and then the bottom one, I have, you know, I was tearing up my house down to the coast last weekend looking for a knee lift. And this may be one of them because there's two of them in here, I see it. It needs to go in the box to go down to the coast. And then I've got these accessory boxes for various machines. These are probably for sergers. These are qu quilting rulers to do shapes uh, with a long arm. And this is not where these go. So those, those need a new home. These are accessory pages for the Luminaire, and I would look for these with the manuals. I want it to stay flat. I don't want them to get messed up. So this is a Luminaire ginormous accessory kit. There's the Move It Foot. Okay, this can stay down here. Tracing paper. This is chalk. I've got a foot. This is the other 10 needle part to my embroidery tree stand. Okay, there's another knee lift. Okay, this goes to my quattro, which is down at the coast. So I'm gonna put this in a box to go to the coast with the knee lift. And then I have more tracing paper and wax tracing paper from my garment sewing days. Some rubber bands. I wouldn't look for them here. They probably go in my desk. I'm gonna rehome those. Y'all, I can't get the camera down any further. I'd have to back up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the tracing paper and the chalk and everything in this drawer because this is where I would look for it first. But everything else, which I'm never gonna use that, but I know it's here. I'm gonna put the accessory bag for the Luminaire in here, back where it goes, along with the tray for the uh, embroidery tree, the thread tree, and then here are the other accessory pins and caps to that thread tree that I never use, but I'm not getting rid of it. And then this case can stay in here. This extra single hole needle plate, I don't know what it goes to, but I'm not getting rid of it because if I need one and I go digging for it, where would I look for it first? I would look for it first in this set of drawers. I don't no, if it's, it is not for the Luminaire. It may be for the Quattro. Yep, it could be for the Quattro. Sure could. I'll take it down to the coast and see. All right, that's it. Okay. Okay, so machine feet is gonna stay machine feet. This is pre-wound bobbins, spool caps, needles. 
So all my embroidery accessories are in here. I like that. And then this is going to stay buttons and what are these things called? Stylus. All right, manuals. And then this is going to be XP accessories. For a last minute fix, I ended up moving, I'm gonna move the label, the tracing chalk and Velcro out of this bottom drawer. This is just XP accessories. And I ended up putting it in here with the manuals. And that is so that all the tracing paper stays real flat. And then in the very bottom drawer, this is just XP accessories. And I ended up moving the magnifier and the brother mouse down here. And I think I can put the stylus down here with it as well because it's all accessories for the XP. And I'm going to take my stylus label off here and put it down here. Okay, well that wasn't too bad. Just a few things I need to move around and some things I have to rehome. And uh, I did not have, but just a few bits of trash. So that wasn't too bad at all. And I think I've got things better organized now where I know what I have. I'm not gonna go buy any pre-wound bobbins. I've got a load, probably enough to last me for three or four years <laughs> or more. So, hey, thanks for joining me with this. I hope it motivated you. Go through your drawers. If it seems insurmountable, you guys, set a timer, 15 minutes, okay? And just do one drawer because just a little bit is better. Just a little bit is better every time you do it. When the timer goes off after 15 minutes, just stop. So uh, close the drawer, you know, you don't have to keep going and going and going. Another piece of advice I might give you just tell yourself, I'm just doing this one thing and ignore everything else. Just ignore it. Don't say, oh, squirrel, and off you go, or you'll never get done. So you've got to build up those decluttering muscles. You uh, need to be disciplined in your time. And your space is so valuable. Your space is very, very valuable. So only give priority in your space to those things that you know you're going to work on, that you remember that you had. If you forgot you had it and you don't even know why you have it, donate it, bless others with your abundance and get rid of anything in your room that doesn't belong there. Old shopping bags, receipts you don't need, uh, scraps you'll never use. There are donation places all over for that, but that is completely up to you. So, all right, you guys, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks for joining me. We will talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.